Welcome ladies and gentlemen. I'm the CEO Strategy Gamer and I'm very excited because it is Friday and that does mean we are returning to our Fridays for Future Let's Play of Fate of the World where we're trying to stem climate change. The year is 2050 so we are 30 years into the game. Uh, emissions that we have been trying to keep under control uh, haven't been really successful so we see that uh, even though in North America and Europe uh, we were quite successful to, to reduce carbon emissions by quite a bit. The rise of China and specifically India, but also Middle East and Southern Africa is, is proving difficult. And that means uh, that our temperature in the world is going to increase probably very dramatically. Now, just last turn we were able to do one thing and that is uh, we were able to research in Japan a, a program to deploy sulfur aerosols and that means we can now do some forcing, some radiative forcing. Uh, we've been seeing positive forcing from methane arctic releases, so basically, uh, well, methane being released into the atmosphere. We're hoping to bring this down and maybe into the negative so that uh, the temperature is going to drop a little bit more uh, over the increase of 1.8 degrees Celsius, but yeah, still overall, it's a very bad track. Uh, we need to get to the year 2200 without uh, surpassing 3 degrees of Celsius and I think that's going to be very very difficult but let's uh, end the turn and see what's going to happen in the next turn. Right so a couple of things here. First these numbers dropped dramatically and that is very good so the projected temperature by 2100 is well below 3 degrees of Celsius now. It is still above 2 degrees of Celsius so that's pretty bad uh, but this is this is a very good drop. On the other hand that might also have to do with this news uh, piece of news over here so resource demand greatly exceeds global supply so oil supply is way too low now so that is something that we have to deal with because that will be hurting the economy it doesn't mean less carbon emissions but this will be tanking the economy and that will have some some very negative uh, consequences we also see that the global oil production is peaking so actually the demand might be increasing and the production is decreasing so that is an issue. Also, uranium production is peaking and that also is a little bit bad. So we do see that, that some areas have increased their carbon emissions. Uh, Russia is higher than expected, as is North Africa a little bit. They are even increasing by 80%. Uh, That's not good. Increase in Latin America. On the other hand, Middle East has been decreasing and J India we actually expected them to increase and they have de been decreasing, so that's very nice to see. And China emissions have been decreasing as well, so that is very good news. People do like us a little bit more in North America. They do like us a little bit more in Japan, so that is both very good news. On the other hand, Oceania and Europe are still challenging, so we are still at risk of being kicked out in these areas. Let's have a look at the global emissions and where they are coming from. We can see that the, yes, the most uh, important polluter at this point is actually India. So that is, a, that is a big issue. So let's have a look over here. So firstly, global emissions. Yeah, so China is falling. That's very good. Middle East is falling. But yeah, India. India, uh, India has also been decreasing a little bit. But overall, uh, we still haven't put much of a dent in the global emissions. But... On the other hand, we can see that the radiative forcing is now negative and that is a very, very good factor because that means that the global temperature is not quite as high as it would have been otherwise. Right, let's go to the biggest polluter in India. You can see various negative news items already. Now let's have a look at the news then. So we do see shortages of oil in the energy sector, a lot in the agricultural sector and a lot in the industrial sector. That's pretty bad. On the other hand, we do see that we have researched uh, fourth generation nuclear power, and that is pretty good. We also see positive effects from the cap and trade emissions, some negative effects in farming, and a lot of bad news on the, on the second side. India at this point is communal, which I think is very good, so we can probably stop the eco-awareness campaign. On the other hand, they are very, very sick due to fuel toxicity, so basically because we are still burning a lot of coal. Water stress, that's pretty bad. Sunshine, less sunshine causes poor harvest, so that is a negative side effect uh, of our aerosols uh, that we are deploying in Japan actually, but they're still being uh, seen over here, so 1% decrease, not the end of the world, and still a lot of sickness. 
On the other hand, a little bit more stability, and I'm extremely happy about that. And smart grids being researched, uh, that too is very good because that means that India is using less electricity, I think. But we sti still do see a lot of oil in the mix, so that is that is a problem because obviously the oil is, uh, yeah, not being used quite as as well. So. Coal is the coal really really is being reduced, but on the other hand that is pushing up the oil demand over here So that is that is an issue and we do need to deal with that So now what I think what we should do then is instead of declining coal power We should actually in uh, over here commit to nuclear power and since we also have force generation nuclear power over here We should accompany that with the force generation conversion incentives So that means that our fuel productivity will be much much higher so, so far I think that's that's pretty good. We also really should think about healthcare over here. Do we have healthcare? Oh, that's peculiar. Right, we also should take into account the water infrastructure. So maybe get enhanced water infrastructure. What is the source actually of the water stress over here? So what are we using water for? Agriculture and industry. So it's not only agriculture anymore, so we might actually do the enhanced water infrastructure because that will infect all sectors, whereas other sectors, specifically charcoal, is only for agricultural water usage. So I'm, I, I'm tempted to use the enhanced water infrastructure over here. Right. We could play coal-free industry. That would, of course, reduce the emissions from industry itself which probably does burn quite a bit of coal. Yes, they do. But that would mean that they are using more electricity and I'm not sure whether our committing to nuclear power over here will be fast enough to, to switch that over. Still, on the other hand, I do think that's an important program, so let's do play it. How are we looking here in terms of GDP per capita? 7,000, that's still not a lot. I'm somewhat tempted to either do one-child policy over here or actually do grow commerce because that would push up the income over here quite a bit as well. Anything else that we might want to do? We could do the wildlife conserva uh, conservation. This is something that I do like very much. So we could um, deploy the aerosols over here, but people wouldn't necessarily like that a lot. At least they wouldn't actively like it. Situation is unstable, but I think that's actually fine. So yeah, since we do have one slot left in India, transport efficiency or one-child policy? How does this, the population look like? 1.5 billion. It's growing, it's growing quickly, but the children, the number of children is increasing, so I think we should... People do like us reasonably well over here, so let's re let's play the one-child policy for a second over here and hope uh, that that will make things a little bit better. And we are aggressively pushing coal out of the industry, we are aggressively trying to commit to nuclear power on a very uh, efficient level. Let's look at China, because China is obviously still a very big polluter, Resources are still significantly undersupplied, but we have discovered fourth generation nuclear power, so that is very, very good and very nice. Carbon cash is being put to good use, good technology. Coal is being replaced in the grid, so that is a. So, sorry, in the industry. So that is an effect of this card over here, which is great. Co generation, that is an effect of this card, so industry is, committed, is uh, emitting less and is more efficient. We do see some draw chances over here. Which of course is not that great. On the other hand, there was a drought already, uh, but we did manage to keep that in check. So, I think what we definitely do need, so we did see that on the electricity side, China is already using a lot of uranium. And I think that's great. You're still using a lot of oil too though, uh, because this is not committing any uh, any carbon emissions but it's still pretty bad because we are using a lot of uranium and uranium supplies are not that great uh, on a worldwide level and I think yeah China is China is by far the biggest user of uranium at this point which is an effect of, of us doing that very aggressive 
uh, conversion, but what we definitely do need is the fourth generation conversion incentives uh, because that will increase uh, the, well, basically the conversion. Right, other than that, I think we did see the draw chance. There's no note about water, was there? No. So only on draughts. We could build the improved draught defenses. I think that would be a generally good idea. And at some point we do want to play the wildlife conversation, uh, conservation. So how are missions looking? Energy. So industry is being capped dramatically. And energy is slowly coming down. Energy in turn is being mostly used for industry. So that will go down. And hopefully these things will go down as well. And I think in terms of industry. We're still using a little bit of coal. But... Hopefully that is going to be switched over. So yeah, I think this is a very good setup for these guys. Is anyone very unstable? Very stable, very unstable in Latin America. Uh, everyone else seems to be doing fine though. So we do need to think about our oil. Oil is mostly available in the Middle East, in Russia and in North America. So let's look at these places because again oil is is being is just being pulled out of the ground way too quickly over here. So yeah, I think this is synthetic oil. No. Resources extraction. So let's look at the oil extracted. Okay, that's over here and we do have the conventional oil over here. The way that this works is there's basically a maximum amount that you can produce, the 3 billion barrels, no, 3, billion te 3 million terawatt hours, um, and of that we have already extracted right over half over here in this area. So uh, let's just look at this number and go through a couple of areas. So if you compare that, for example, to India, we should see a lot less. Yeah, so just 80,000, whereas here it was 6 million uh, overall. And this is somewhat this is currently not uh, recoverable at current technologies, but it might be later if we are more aggressive. So yeah, we should really see that all of these areas are more or less insignificant. Uh, well, Southern Africa does have some. Some in Latin America, but not much. Very little in Northern Africa, a lot in the Middle East. Japan, nothing, basically, literally nothing, pretty much. China doesn't have that much. Russia should have a little bit more. Well, not that much though. And we have nearly recovered everything, so that means uh, our production here will be will be drastically bad. Not well. North America, then. No, I think the most important one will be the Middle East. So, definitely, irrespective, basically, of the news, uh, we will have to expand the oil production over here. This is fairly expensive, but it does mean that we're getting more max production, more recoverable, um, and it's basically just required because of the global oil usage at its point, and otherwise we'd be really, really bad, because again, the agriculture is undersupplied over here, the industry is undersupplied. So, yeah, that's pretty bad. Extensions level, ooh. Very nice. No passive deforestation, plus 25 support. Very nice, people do like us a lot over here. Efficiency drive, peace, very good. At least turning to coal, okay, that's not quite as good. But other than that, I think I'm actually happy with the results over here. Let's jump over to Russia, see whether there are any news. Yes, all of these agri all of these things are undersupplied. A lot of fire damage over here, so that's not quite as great. Ooh, drilling advances for fossil fuel production. Deep gas production in this little plus 10 oil production. So was there any technology that we might want to have for this? Advanced drilling. Do we have that in the Middle East actually? We do not. We should really think about getting advanced drilling down here in the Middle East. So let's actually drop this for a second and get advanced drilling techniques. Plus 10% oil production. Plus 5% discoverable oil. I think this is a very good technology. I know this is really not what we should be doing in an area where we are where we're trying to break out of carbon emissions, but you know what? I think it's simply what we have to do. So Russia is somewhat big 
polluter actually in, in terms of emissions. But most of that is probably forestry. Yeah. So yeah, other than the wildfires over here, should be pretty fine. So for a second we're going to cut out the business and carbon wrecks and expand oil production in Russia as well. And that should be a fairly good choice, I think. Uh, but all of the undersupply does make me wonder whether we will be facing any food shortages uh, anytime soon. I think the uh, cutoff is 100 if you are very unstable. Uh, which no region really is except for Latin America. So yeah, that's fine all in all. Okay, uh, let's go to Southern uh, Africa next because it's a vastly growing country. Especially in terms of population. Should I really not be playing maybe... You have a very high elderly population. People do retire here very quickly, I think. But yeah, the population is growing extremely fast overall. So that's not quite as good. I think what we have to do is play the one child policy over here. And how do we look in terms of GDP per capita? Pretty well, actually. So any particular good news or bad news? No, everything seems to be going more or less as, as expected. So we are growing the commercial sector, doing an eco-awareness campaign. Eh, you know what, you're actually balanced, so I don't think we necessarily need that. Need to continue that, is what I mean to say. We could try to commit to nuclear or anything like that. Vegetarian revolution might not be bad. I think agriculture is always a very good place to... Well, but on the, on the other hand, you're really focused on the energy usage. Mostly for industry. And you are using mostly coal. We have some renewables. Yeah, but we do need to address the coal crisis here. We could acquire smart grids. When would you get that otherwise? In 105 years. I think smart grids is a, is a, is a good technology to grab. It means less energy use, less and less energy use in the residential sector. A little bit more GDP. I think that is a very good choice. Jump over to Northern Africa, where things aren't quite as good. Migration risk. Very low HDI, but you're doing some things pretty well. Situation is stabilizing. Well, likewise, we could acquire smart grids. You're not that unemployed. Where do the emissions come from? Energy, energy and industry. And here you're mostly burning gas and oil. I wonder, where do we burn the most oil? Can we see that on a global level? Where are we using oil? So that's production? Yeah, I think this is production. I'd rather have a look at consumption, really. Total production. Can't see that here. But I should be able to see it over here, shouldn't I? Right, so let's keep an eye on this. So, oil. Oil used. 9,000. Oh, wait, wait a minute, we should actually see it over here, shouldn't we? So, oil and gas needed. China, India, Middle East. Yeah. Oh well, we'll have to think about that. Okay, back to Northern Africa then. Protect lands and soils would be pretty nice. Materialist, I think it would be good to just eco-awareness you a little bit. Just get you a little bit away from materialist outlook. Yeah, I think that's that's a good choice. Right, so we've dealt with all of these five, haven't we? Let's go to Latin America. Uh, the area over here is, un is not stable, so yeah, because people are troubled. Fire damage. Healthcare spending. Yeah, well, that, this is good. Right. Well, all of these are very good, I think. So I don't think we need to change much over here. Uh, let's get to North America then. News over here seem to be a little bit better. Less residential usage. Still a bit fire damage. Fire damage is pretty bad. Just globally, on the other hand. 
Things are somewhat okay over here. And we have actually, you can see this card over here is, is a little bit greyed out. That's pretty good because that means we probably are not using any coal power at all anymore. Yes. Mostly using gas, which isn't necessarily the greatest. But I think overall we might be dropping here. Yes. Yeah, so that's pretty good. I don't think we have to do anything more. Uh, we'll of course continue the business and household carbon wrecks. And I think at some point, wait one minute, what was that? Late retirement. Increases productivity by having more people work. Yes, well, okay, that's nice, but not necessarily required. Could do coal-free industry. Might do. Well, I think industrial carbon wrecks. Probably going to be a good choice over here. Certainly want to keep the infotech and energy research going. Because that means we will be getting some nice stuff next turn. So I think that's pretty good. Yeah. I like it. Ooh. You have a high unemployment over here? Really? 12%. Interesting. Well, we could play that. On the other hand, adaption to droughts, water management... Well, I'm tempted to pick the Protect Land and Soil Act. Could do force generation nuclear conversion. But you know what? I think it's actually best to expand all production. Just for a turn over here, that should be okay. Europe, people don't really like us. Well, but on the other hand, every pretty much in the news are all very good. Sunshine, wildfire. Wildfire, of course, is not that great. So, yeah, but we're doing some eco-awareness, we're doing cap and trade. Have we actually completed the industrial program? Yeah, it seems so. So, it, it appears that clubbing wasteful buildings, eco-awareness, tech booming. Yes, industry emission reduction complete. So, basically, this card that we've just been playing in North America has been completed, and that's pretty nice. Uh, because that does mean that we don't have to play it anymore, so that's great. So I think we should maybe play the coal-free industry. Do we need to adapt to anything? We could do improved draw mechanisms. Wildlife, uh, but people wouldn't like that. And people kind of hate us over here anyway. Also high unemployment over here in, in Europe. That's pretty bad. Could do transport efficiency. Probably a lot of a lot of your emissions are coming from transport usage by now. Yeah, although overall they are very low. So forestry, yeah. But people would like this, so let's actually invest in this. And I think that's pretty good. So that does leave I think pretty much only these three countries or regions. Southeast Asia? Or South Asia, I guess. Carbon year, deforestation slowing down, nice to see, green outlook, well they still consumerist. Agricultural emissions are going down, but so is GDP. Stability is going up, smart grids, nice, wildfires, bad. Okay, still overall protecting land and soil is nice, cap and trade is nice, eco-awareness is I think a good idea. Your global emissions are somewhat high actually, 9% of global emissions. Energy, gas, but a bit of coal as well. But just moving out of coal right now, I don't think would be that wise. So yeah, I think that's fine. Japan is deploying uh, sulfur aerosols, which I think is very nice. Do we need to be aware of any general strike? So, oh yeah, actually unstable right now. I'm displeased. Yeah, but you do like us a little bit more, so that's nice. Old reactors are being replaced. That's nice. Tech is booming. How about in Oceania? That's sunshine, force generation. Okay. Sickness, tech, nuclear proliferation. I think everything is great over here. And we'll soon get high yield crops. Uh, do we actually have first generation or second generation biofuels everywhere? We do not, but then again. It's such an ancillary tech. I think it's only worthwhile to get into biofuels once you've uh, researched third generation. And we're pretty far away from that for now. 
could we in North America? We will be getting our results in five years anyway, so I think that will be a good place to to uh, use that then. We do have some more, a little bit more money, so where do we want to spend that? If we do look at the overall emissions, the Middle East, we do have four people over there right now. Southern Africa, we do have quite some, four as well. It does somewhat leave Latin America. So Latin America, we only have three cards. It's a very unstable region. People are troubled over here. Could do with more education. HDI is okay, but not great. Electricity, you have a lot of different problems, I think. So this might be a good place to purchase another card. On the other hand, there are still some regions where we only have two two cards. Well, only Oceania and Russia. Well, I think Russia probably deserves another card. Let's recruit one over here. Another agent in Russia. See what we can do. There was no... Well, there was the fire damage. Which we really would need to reduce. Some storm defenses, even though in Russia that's not quite as critical. Could be land and soil protection, but that wouldn't necessarily be the one that I would like the most. Or industrial carbon wrecks. What are you actually using uh, your emissions on? What's causing the emissions? Forestry, yes, of course. And energy. You're using your energy? Well, it's sort of mixed. You want to acquire any particular thing? Well, smart grids would always be nice. We're expanding all production, so that will make people like us a little bit more. So, you know what? We could do wildlife. Let's do wildlife. I would like to, to preserve biodiversity just a little bit. That means we can buy one more person, which I think is going to be in Latin America. Yeah, let's go ahead. Recruit. And let's get in a cart over here. People are materialist. There's no water problem or anything. Can't quite spend as much as we would need to protect the land and soil. But we could certainly do business and household carbon regulation. So that's very nice. Yeah, good. I like it. Let's take the turn and see what's going to happen. I'm very, very worried about the oil production overall. So, yeah. Ooh, emissions are rising. Oil resource demands outpace supply, but only by 8%. So we've, we've, we're doing a little bit better over here. But you can see our, our emissions are exploding and we've actually... Now, we are now at 2, per, two degrees Celsius uh, over pre-industrial times, and it's only 2060, so that's well within my life expectations, so yeah, not as great. And emissions are still rising, so it's so hard to do this. Global oil production is on the rise, so that's good, even though it's causing more uh, problems in this regard. But we are seeing a photovoltaic cell breakthrough, so that is nice, that is very good. Super tensile materialist breakthrough, that too is very good. Russia is decreasing a lot because we are not seeing as many fires. Middle East is increasing, that's not good. India is increasing by 2%. China is increasing by 11%. It's extremely bad. Nobody outright hates us anymore though. Even Europe is liking us a little bit more. Only Oceania does, does pretty much hate us. And India is, is decreasing, so... Yeah, but yeah, emissions, it's just, man, emissions are still, still on the rise, aren't they? No, no, they actually dropped. And I think that's mostly due to, due to some fire, wildfires abating. So that's extremely nice. But still temperature. Still protected to rise. <sighs> well, but... We'll have to do a lot of things next turn. Uh, you can see a lot of our agents are out of uh, stuff over here. We have we are seeing some news, but you know what? For once, it doesn't seem to be mostly negative news. It seems to be okay news uh, in in a lot of these areas. Not only, but to some extent, 
So yeah, very much looking forward to next time when we'll be talking about the year 2060. Thank you very much for watching guys. See you next time. Do leave a like if you want and subscribe to be updated next time. Bye bye.